Today, talking about the topic of the environment, my guest is Richard Storey, who is chairman of Arosha. Richard, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Firstly, tell us about Arosha. What, what is it? What's it about? What, what sort of things do you do? Well, uh, essentially, Arosha is Christians in conservation. Uh, the idea was to, to get people together to live out the gospel in a conservation context. Basically, Christians and non-Christians meeting together, um, studying an area of, of common interest and living out community together and um, basically living the gospel in, uh, with the understanding that God cares about humans, but also everything else he's created. And he designed us to, to be together and, and share the planet together. Mm. In some senses, we are very clean and green. Uh, over a third of our land area is in national parks, and that's, I believe, the highest percentage in the OECD, um, probably one of the highest, almost certainly one of the highest in the world. Um, so it's very easy for New Zealanders to, to go somewhere and be in, in wilderness, in real wilderness, where there's uh, no visible signs of, of humans. So that gives us and, and uh, a lot of tourists the impression that we are clean and green. But when it comes to the places where people actually live in New Zealand, uh, the story is really quite different. Um, I work in, in fresh water, that's my, uh, my, my day job. Yeah. And um, there are some quite frightening figures out there. For example, uh, a recent survey of, of lowland uh, rural pastoral rivers showed up that 96% that of them failed the, the test for contact recreation meaning that you're likely to get sick if you, if you swam in that river um, because of bacterial levels. And about 80% of the, the waterways failed the test for nitrogen and phosphorus levels, which create algal blooms and um, disrupt ecosystems. So um, depends how you look at it. This year actually is the 20th anniversary of the, the original Earth Summit in Rio. And that was the occasion for a number of people to do reports on, on how well we're doing. World Wildlife Fund did a report on New Zealand's progress just recently, and um, out of all the, the factors they looked at, they looked at six different areas, and they said mostly our report card was not good. We were either failing to meet targets or actually going backwards in some areas. Are there perceived differences in values and priorities between the Christian community generally and the environmental community? There are only a I think a very small minority of Christians that would be suspicious of you for, for having an environmental concern. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, some of them tend to have um, quite public voices. Mm -hmm. um, and so you do hear people saying um, in, the, in the public arena that um, the environmental movement is, is very sort of anti-Christian. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's a shame. Uh, it, is, it does have quite a strong spiritual element in it. Um, but to me, that's, um, that's a reason to engage with the environmental community because a lot of people in the environmental movement are realizing that the answers to our problems don't come just at a, at a surface level. Uh, we're not going to save the planet just by recycling more or turning off the lights in the, in the bedroom when we're not there. Uh, we've, we've got to look really deep at our whole relationship with, with the planet. And um, so the questions... Um, at that level do become spiritual and people are looking for spiritual answers to our environmental problems. And some do turn to Christianity, but some turn to, to other faiths as well. Um, to me, that's, that's exciting. That's an opportunity to, to be a Christian in, in that area because it means that we can, we can talk at a spiritual level with, with people um, ar around an area of common concern. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's not a reason for Christians to, to run away from the environmental movement, but to, to go in and engage more deeply, I think. That whole creation care movement, I mean, the, the biblical basis for that, of course, right, right back at the beginning of the book, really, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes, I mean, it, it, it starts with Genesis and it, it finishes with, with Revelation. And um, yeah, right from the very first chapter, God is saying that the creation is, is good. Um, he's saying, let let the oceans teem with life, you know, to the animals, be blessed, fill, fill the earth. Um, so that's, that's going on right from the beginning of the Bible. And the story continues right the way through to, to Revelation, where there's, there's a new heaven and a new earth, not meaning a, a replacement of the old, but actually a, a renewal of the earth. So everything that's corrupt and broken 
and anti-God is removed and everything that is pure and right and, and wholesome remains. And, um, and, that's, and heaven and earth come together and, and God is dwelling there. Mm. So um, the, the whole story of the Bible in, includes creation, not, not just as a backdrop or a theater for the human drama, but very much a player. Mm.